Hi, welcome back. What's the difference between land, real estate, and real property, and what does that have to do with the deep sea? Let's find out. Before we talk about the deep sea, let's talk about land. How is it that you're able to own land? Well, land ownership really came about in, during the feudal system in 7th century France. And if you know about the feudal system, the king owned everything. And the lords and the barons and whoever was appointed by the king would be able to hold on to that land for a period of time. Well, actually they were still squatters on the king's land. They really didn't own it. If the king decided to take it away, they could take it away. Think of Game of Thrones. Remember when uh, Danny and Cersei had all the strap hangers trying to get them to give them land for a favor? Well, it's like that. So by the Norman Conquest, which was 1066 AD, the lords uh, were a little bit upset that they never really could own this land. They worked it. They had serfs, peasants, who would work for them, work the land, make it productive. And they felt it was sort of unfair that the king would keep it for himself or the queen. There was a little bit of a revolt, but it took the next 200 years before anything actually changed. The lords and nobles had had enough of this and forced King John to sign the Magna Carta in 1215 AD. Now, the lords and nobles could own land, but not as peasants. We were still squatters. Anyway, this started to change when commoners wanted their own land as well. And actually, the Americas were built on this. If you came over and you settled an area, you owned it. This, this whole concept of being able to own your own land was given to the world by America and particularly the United States. You're welcome, world. So let's get back to our main question. What's the difference between land, real estate, and real property? Well, land, as you can probably guess, is that brown stuff that we build our homes on. If you own land, you own the land all the way to the center of the earth and up into the atmosphere. Does that mean that you could shoot down commercial airliners crossing over your land? No. The federal government reserves the right for air travel to use that air above you. But legitimately, if you own land, you own it to the center of the earth and the atmosphere above you with restrictions. When you buy a home, you own the land, unless the land is not part of that estate. So think about manufactured home parks. There are manufactured home parks where you can buy the manufactured home, but you must lease the land that it's on. This could be $400, $500, $700, even more. Not a very good deal. And in general, in those parks, the homes that are there are more considered to be vehicles than homes. We call these leasehold estates, and we're not gonna talk about leasehold estates, that's a different video. We're talking about fee simple real estate and real property. Fee simple is the highest form of ownership you can have. So the difference between land and real estate is that you put an attachment on that land. So the attachment plus the land becomes real estate. That home that you put on there is attached and not movable, unlike a mobile home. And so there's a distinct difference between having land with a mobile home on it and having a home on land that you own that is attached. But even that's not the highest form of ownership. We come now to real property. So what's the difference between real estate and real property? Well, with real estate, sometimes you might not have all the rights, like mineral or oil rights or precious metal rights to that property that you have your house on. You have to read and make sure that when you purchase a property, you have full and clear title to everything included. In addition, we receive the bundle of rights. So this is where deep sea comes in. If we look at deep sea, this is a mnemonic device that our instructors in real estate school told us to remember regarding the bundle of rights. First, we have disposition, then we have exclusion, we have enjoyment, we have possession and we have control. That's deep sea. Are you thinking of something else? The first of the bundle of rights is disposition. Pretty easy. Disposition means that you can dispose of property any way that you want to. You can give it away or you can keep it. You can lend it out to other people. You could lease it out to other people. You can divide it. You can keep some for yourself, give it to others. Disposition just means you can get rid of that property in any way that you want. The second is exclusion. That gives you the power to keep anybody off your land that you don't want to be on your land. You control who enters and who can stay. Often you'll see this advertised with a no trespassing sign. They mean it. 
they have exclusive rights to that land. Enjoyment is also fairly straightforward. We can use it for our own enjoyment, as long as we don't impinge on the rights of others. For instance, if we play loud music and it disturbs our neighbors, if they, we are now entering into their environment with our music. Uh, you cannot nude sunbathe in public where people can see you. That's another one where you are infringing upon the rights and you lack propriety in the way you are enjoying that property. And so there are some limitations on what you can do. Possession means that we occupy that property and we use it to our benefit. If we want to grow crops on that property, we can do that. Now, you might have an HOA that says no chickens allowed. And so even under possession, you may not be able to have chickens depending on what your HOA says. So you have to, if you're in an HOA, you have to make sure you read the CCNRs because there could be some limitations on your bundle of rights. And finally, we have control. Under control, we can physically change the property. We can add a fence. We can add a pool. We can do renovations to that property, so we have control. And again, this makes up deep sea. If you have any questions whether your property comes with a bundle of rights, contact your realtor. See you next time.